We're going to look at the book of Zechariah chapter 14, Zechariah chapter 14, and then we're going to look at the approximately the last five verses. So there's big news going on concerning May 14th as the rapture date. Now, I think we all learned by now that you can't trust rapture dates so easily. So there were many interesting historical events and numerology in the Bible that they tied into, which is not a coincidence, it's very interesting. And then they suppose that to be the rapture date. However, as uh, uh, in dispensationalism, what men learn from history is that men never learn from history. So you got to realize this, all previous rapture dates has significant historical events, verses, etc. So if they failed, you got to be careful with this date too. So we don't believe in pinpointing an exact rapture date setting and saying it will certainly happen. However, there are some interesting th points here that it could, uh, the Lord, you never know, he might think of that as an interesting time to drop by. So y'all heard about Israel's 70 years. So they're going to be se celebrating that. Now, with, within Israel's 70 years, if you look at the Bible, there, some, there are significance with the number 70. There are significances with the number 70. The first thing is actually the Babylonian captivity, you gotta understand. So as you might recall, in the Babylonian captivity, the children of Israel were enslaved for 70 years. Now, this is what's really interesting. A lot of future end times prophecy about restoration of the nation of Israel, the restoration of the nation of Israel, it refers to end times. However, a lot of it was fulfilled in the first century, or not the first century, it was fulfilled right after the Babylonian captivity. So when God talked about the nation of Israel being restored, yes, some of it applied to future millennium or tribulation end times, but some of it also applied right at the end of the Babylonian captivity. So when God says that Israel was done for 70 years in captivity and they'll be restored, I mean, who's to say that this might not connect with the end times, right, with 70 years? Because some of it was fulfilled at the early centuries and a lot of it does apply to end times. So that's one interesting point. The second thing is that the first Jewish revolt it happened within 70 years between each other. The first one started at 66 AD. And then 70 years passed by, and then it ended at 136 AD. And then you know the story. The nation of Israel was scattered forever. A second historical event. Coincidentally, 70 years. Interesting. The third thing, so I will move over here, that way people can see better. The third thing, now this is probably even more interesting, the first Jewish purchase of the land of Palestine. So during the first Jewish purchase of Palestine, it happened at 1878. Now when it was purchased at 1878, can you guess that after 70 years later, <laughs> if you calculate, what date is that? 1948, which you know was when the nation of Israel was restored. Interesting. And the Bible says that the end times is definitely connected when Israel's restorate when Israel is restored. That clock is ticking. So who's to say that there's nothing significant about this 70 years later on? So this is very interesting, 70th anniversary, what the Bible will show. Now in dispensationalism, for some of you who don't know what dispensationalism is, dispensationalism is we believe that there are different time periods on how the Lord worked out th things. So let me put the line more properly here. 1,000 years, then you have the tribulation here, and then we have the church age here. So obviously, 
the tribulation, that's when the Antichrist and 666 starts occurring. The 1,000 years is when Jesus Christ comes down upon the earth and rules for a 1,000 years long. Now, the thing is this, how they estimate with May 14th is the key, the key verse is Zechariah 14, people argue. Because there's a certain feast called Feast of Tabernacles. Now, here's the thing, the Feast of Tabernacles, that occurs when God comes down at the millennium. And they have to worship God. The Bible says that God demands worship, and they worship him during the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, it won't make sense that, you know, we put the, once God comes down, and then God will give it a, an 11-month gap, and then they'll later worship him. No, it will seem mo more likely that as soon as he comes down, they're going to worship him immediately. And there are verses that show that. So, if the worship starts at Feast of Tabernacles, and he has to be worshipped immediately when he comes down at the start of the millennium, then the Feast of Tabernacles is going to be logical to say the start of the clock of the millennium. Now think about it, you go backwards years, right, into the church age. Now, what did the book of Daniel prophesy? There's a certain amount of days that the book of Daniel prophesied, actually. When you go backwards from the Feast of Tabernacles, which occurs like around in October, and then you go backwards 200 and it's over 230 days. So when you go beyond 230 days and you go backwards, there are people who estimate from the Bible calendar to be like around six, one-third years approximately. So think about this. If you're going to, if, if it goes like this, the length, and then you go backwards, starting with Feast of Tabernacles at October. Okay, six years, October. A third, so then let's say like four months, so then October, September. August, July, and you got like around July or June, right? So let's put it right here. So then there are people that suppose that's going to be like around the summertime, right? July or June. Let's put June here. But the thing is this, is that the Lord, he has to clean up the temple as well. The Lord, he has to clean up the enemies and the pollution and then set everything up. If we were to do that, to give it a little bit more extra time before June, let's say, what's right before June? Right here. So that's why there are some people who argue that this would be a very logical thing to think about that May 14th, something, the rapture could occur at that time. So which is really interesting. Look at Zechariah 14. We see that the Lord, he comes down during that time period. It's Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. So that's his second advent, Armageddon, when he comes down. He conquers the nations. Then what does he do? which came against Jerusalem, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. See that? They worship him, and then they observe the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Now think about this, is that the Lord, he cannot send rain as well. He's not going to send rain if you don't go to worship him. So if we're going to suppose that he's going to start the rain once they come to worship him and etc., how and if you insist Feast of Tabernacles, well, it doesn't have to be right at this day. It could be a little bit later on, maybe 11 months later. Why not? Well, think about it. 11 months without rain. See that? So that's why they're saying that it would be like Feast of Tabernacles. It will be more logical to say that he comes right when it starts with Feast of Tabernacles, they say. 
And verse 19, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. Their punishment, no rain at verse 18. That's their punishment. Now, the thing is this, is that concerning rapture date settings, we got uh, we gotta be very objective. There's a lot of interesting things right here, but you have to be objective and you can't just believe it easily. So one, one thing that you have to think about as a possibility is that you don't really have to stay it starts right here. Now you might insist that no, we, uh, we, it has to start right there. No, because they can worship God at judgment of nations. Judgment of nations is found at Matthew 25. In Matthew 25, as soon as he comes down, what does he do? He immediately judges the nations and they have to worship him. And he has to divide the sheep from the goats. So when he divides the sheep from the goats, then he, you can say that, yes, when he comes down, when God comes down, they do have to worship him. But you know what? God can start it at the judgment of nations as a clock. So it doesn't have to be that case. Well, there has to be rain. Well, the thing is this, is that it doesn't have to be rain because the millennium is a time of what? Peace and prosperity. The Lord, he changes the whole earth. You see that? I mean, you got to realize this, Adam and Eve and the days of Noah, they had no rain at all. And yet they did fine and lived a prosperous life. So the Lord, he can take care of the earth. He can take care of the earth and he can time things right. So they don't think about that. The second thing that they don't think about is this. The second thing that they don't think about is that previous rapture dates had the same thing. What I mean by same thing is that they had the same logic of verses and historical events, but they didn't work. What, the reason why this may be different from other ones is because you found something else that's interesting. See? But were you, let me ask them, the rapture date setters, this question. Did you disprove the previous rapture dates? Did you disprove them? See? They just found some things that were more interesting here. That's all they did. They didn't disprove these. So that's the same thing right here. The third thing is this, is that what you got to realize is this. In 2 Peter 3, 9, the Bible says the reason why he prolongs the rapture is because he's looking for, to see how many souls are still willing to get saved tonight, to get saved tomorrow, to get saved next month, to get saved. I mean, they might, somebody might get saved right now. You never know. So the Lord, he always does this. If you read the apostles' writings, they expected the rapture to happen at their time period and the kingdom to be set up. But it's been 2,000 years, right? Why? They even had the Antichrist. The Bible said the Antichrist was already there, not the official one. It was an unofficial one. But then they realized that the official one can come out any moment because the Lord had an Antichrist set up, the Roman Caesar. So he has to be Roman. And he had... Uh, the rapture and everything set up in play. So that's why you got to realize this is that the Lord, this makes sense now why previous rapture dates didn't work. There are a lot of things that were interesting and the Lord could have came, but he chose not to see. Here are other interesting things concerning about uh, the 70 years. Concerning the 70 years, which is really interesting, is that why this date is so significant is that there were a lot of Palestinians that were organizing, uh, ten, uh, they were organizing protests from March 30 to May 15th, which is very interesting. And it was at the border fence between Gaza and Israel, and that included a tent city for participants as well. Now, the thing is this, is that if the Palestinians had one, why won't the Jews have one uh, during this day, May 14th? And all you need is a tent set up to, for it to be the third temple that the Antichrist can rule over. I don't know if some of you know that, but it's possible that the third temple in Jerusalem that's going to be set up, the Lord could see it as a tent set up. I'll show that in a different study, actually. The Lord can call it a temple. So that's really interesting right there. Another thing that's interesting about and significant about this date, which is why they think that it could be the rapture, is... This one's obviously the most in, uh, one of the most interesting ones. America has vowed to move their embassy to Jerusalem on May 14th to add to the celebration of Israel's 
70th anniversary. I think that's a really big thing. I mean, this has never happened before. Israel's getting it. United States is one of the things that's connected to a lot of one world, or United Nations, one world stuff. So if they're in play, I mean, you can get a lot of things set up. So the thing is this, is that this is an interesting day. But remember, you got to look at all possibilities as well. They don't look at that. They don't look at all possibilities. And then I get people who give me calls or emails and say that the rapture is happening at that day because there are so many verses and historical events and numbers that show it. And I just tell them the same thing. Yeah, it is interesting. But the thing is this, is that uh, you can't lose sleep over it. You don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, the Bible never said clearly it has to be at those times and in those dates. And you know what happened? The people lost sleep over it. And when the date passed, they got really uh, distraught about it, really distraught. So when there are people who set up these rapture dates, you got to watch out for that. It's, especially when people say at the end, I'm not saying this is the exact day of the rapture. I don't like that. Why would you spend 30 minutes and all this kind of conundrum as if you're trying to persuade them to believe that the date will happen? And then you use the line as a cop out that I'm not saying this is a date for the rapture. The person who's speaking might not believe it's the exact date of the rapture, but the people watching online, what do you think they're going to think? They're going to be persuaded that it's a rapture date. So that's why you got to watch out for this kind of stuff, these rapture date setters.